so I now want to pass the mic to you. Um, wherever you are, listening in a car, taking us on a walk with you, doing errands, wherever you are right now, I want you to think about your own guiding phrase, your own mantra that's very meaningful to you. And I want you to stop and ask yourself today at this point in my life, what is a mantra that I'd really love to live by? Something that could act like a lifeline, some form of reassurance, something that maybe you wish somebody else would say to you. You know, it's interesting that we're having this conversation because Kendall, who is our uh, middle uh, child, who's 22, she's about to graduate from college. She's been talking about getting a tattoo, talking about getting a tattoo when she graduates, but she doesn't know what it might be. And she's been thinking in the form of symbols. But for the purpose of this conversation, I really want you listening to us as I pass the mic over to you to be thinking about a phrase, whether it's a phrase like Chris's one gate that maybe one of your parents would say to you, or it's a phrase like it shall be that a friend of mine reminded me that I say all the time to her when I'm trying to get her to push through her fears and to believe in herself. And here's the interesting thing as you start to formulate in your own mind, what could that phrase or that word be for you? And I find this to be really interesting. See, mantras cut both ways because there are good mantras and bad mantras. There are mantras that work and mantras that don't. Mantras are powerful, but they don't work unless you believe what the mantra or the phrase says. And I'm going to unpack this because I think this is super important. It's why so many of us get positive self-talk or self-love completely wrong. A mantra is only going to work if you believe intrinsically in what the mantra means. And so I'll give you an example. A lot of you have been told that you need to uh, have more positive self-talk, which you do. But if you've been beating yourself up for 40 years, there is no way you can stand in front of a mirror and say, I love myself. Or if you've been just hating on your body for decades, you're not going to be able to stand in front of the mirror and go, I look beautiful. I want you to feel those things. But if your behavior and your own mindset proves day in and day out that you don't love yourself, that you not only don't think your body is beautiful, you think it's disgusting, or you think it's gross, or you think it's this, or you think it's that, simply saying a mantra because you think you should, it will not work. It actually makes things worse because your mind is like, oh, what do you mean you, you, you think you're, no, you don't. You know what you said to yourself all day yesterday? No, it's not true. And your mind starts to fight against it. And so it makes your negative beliefs worse. And so one of the things that I want you to think about is that as you come up with this phrase for yourself, rule number one, it has to be meaningful. And what I mean by that is a meaningful mantra is one that you can get behind. It's one that when you say it or somebody else says it to you, you're like, yeah, I can get behind that. So for example, if you struggle with how you look, instead of saying, I'm beautiful, when you don't quite feel it and believe it yet, start saying, I deserve kindness. I'm trying my best. I deserve to feel better. My body needs me to take care of it. Those are all things that you can get behind. And so oftentimes, one of the things that I say, if you're just kind of new to thinking about some guiding phrase or a meaningful mantra or some sort of word that you're going to use as your theme or your lifeline, is like, bring it down just a little. Like, don't jack the mantra up like, I am the best. Because some days you're not going to feel that way. And so if you have that tattooed on your wrist, you're going to be like, I don't feel like the best right now. You want to ratchet it down just a little so you can always get behind it. I'm trying my best. 
Anybody can get behind that. Here's some other ones. What if it works out? Talked a lot about that on the podcast. I love that one. What if it works out? So many people don't even realize that their guiding philosophy right now is, what if it doesn't work out? Imagine adopting the meaningful mantra. What if it works out? Another one that I love is courage. Courage. You know, I think courage comes first. We often sit around and feel self-doubt or feel unmotivated. In those moments, courage, that courage inside you to act, to say something, to show up when you don't feel like it. Courage is what you need first. And so courage is a beautiful reminder. You got this. You got this is just encouragement. I believe in you. I love that phrase. I believe in you. One day at a time. That's sort of like one gate, isn't it, hon? Yeah, it is a little bit like that. But I think what you're speaking to also is that um, like everything that you just mentioned almost alludes to a way of being or an attitude or, you know, a certainly a reminder. I'm glad that our kids haven't decided yet on what or when to put ink on their body. But mm-hmm. I like the fact that they're they're clearly reticent until they find that thing. And that mm. thing is by way of having watched us find our own phrase, yeah. which is very meaningful and has a profound message to us. And it is sort of embodied in uh, a philosophy for lack of a better term that they haven't found that yet. Mm. And some of that could just be that they haven't grown up enough yet, if you will, to have put their finger on, well, what do I really need in those times uh, to be reminded or to be encouraged or, and I, I, at least I think that's, the hiccup so far for our kids that mm. they, they just haven't they haven't arrived on that yet. You just gave me a huge breakthrough. One way that you could figure out a meaningful mantra or this sort of guiding phrase for you is think about the future you, the person that you want to become. And just assume that it all works out. Just assume that um, you become the person that you dream about becoming. How about you let the future you give the present you that assurance and that advice so that the tattoo or the post-it note or whatever it is, the mantra that you say to yourself over and over, that it is a reminder from the person you're becoming, that you got this. Believe, courage, all of that is incredible. Whoa, I love that. You know, Tracy, who's also a friend and a colleague, she has a great one that's been on her bedside table for a year. Every day I'm learning and growing. I love that. Every day I'm learning and growing. Every day I'm learning and growing. And by simply repeating it over and over and over again, you will, because what you, you know, they always- And that's on her bedside table, not on her body. Yes. That's an option too for anybody, right? Well, Ta- yeah, tattoos because are... that's how you, that's the reason why tattoos can be so powerful is because a tattoo is what researchers call an environmental trigger. An environmental trigger is something that you encounter visually in a space that cues a certain thought or behavior. And a lot of us are aware of triggers in the negative sense. Oh, you trigger me. Oh, that sound triggers this. But you can use environmental triggers in a very positive and profound way. And I talk about environmental triggers extensively in the episode that we did called Five Essential Hacks to Make New Habits Stick. And I love environmental triggers. And so for sure, this tattoo and your tattoo, that is a visual reminder that triggers a certain positive way of thinking. But you can use a post-it note. 
In fact, this is the assignment, everybody. I want you to come up with a phrase and you can borrow one that you've heard us say today and try it on for size because it's sort of like you got to see if it fits. And how do you know if the phrase fits? You're not resisting it. You're not arguing against it. You're not saying the phrase, I'm beautiful. Yeah, but. No, you got to come up with something that feels right. It's sort of like Goldilocks and the three bears, right? One's too little, one's too big, one feels just right. That's how you try this on. Then I want you to take a Sharpie, a permanent pen, and write it on a Post-it note. And stick that sucker on your mirror or on your laptop somewhere in your physical space that you're going to bump into it. Your bedside table, the way that Tracy does. Heck, if you're thinking about a tattoo, before you get a tattoo, make the tattoo in a Sharpie on your arm. And, you know, I got to say, I don't want to hear any of you saying, Mel, I got a tattoo because of you. That, that, like, you get a tattoo because you want a tattoo. Do not have me pressure you to get a tattoo. And I so believe in this. Don't you believe in this? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the environmental trigger piece is, just makes such a difference. Yeah. You have an interesting environmental trigger on your bulletin board. It's a photo of you. <laughs> Why are you giggling? <laughs> I, uh, I knew somehow you were going <laughs> to raise this topic again. Why? <laughs> Guys, he is the cutest photo that our friend Jenny Maloney took. And it's a black and white photo of Chris. And he's looking off to the side and he's sort of smiling. And he posted it. He pinned it to his bulletin board. And he wrote in a Sharpie, you with an arrow pointing at himself. And it sits right on his bulletin board at his desk, and I can see you tearing up. What does that photo mean? What does it trigger you to think? Um, just to... Um, I think it's a, I, I don't think it was, I was prompted to print the picture and tack it on my board as a, a piece of a homework assignment in a class that I'm taking where I found myself through dream work and dream analysis to just need to be reminded that I am, that I'm perfect the way I am, that I am, I am, yes, I'm good enough, or that who I am is who I am. And so it was a spontaneous response to uh, work that I was doing in this class to say, this was one of those hacks or habits I was going to develop was to look at that picture every day and see me as I am and embrace and love that person. Oh, this is for your masters in psych. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think everybody's going to steal that one too. I mean, I don't have a mirror in my office, so instead I put a picture of myself. <laughs> Environmental trigger, everybody. And I'm really serious about this. Positive triggers in the environment, triggering positive thinking patterns and positive physical change. And I want to keep inspiring you. So I'm going to share a couple things that some of our listeners have shared with me on social media. And the first one is from Denise. Hi, Mel. It's Denise from Phoenix, Arizona. The meaning of my tattoo, which says, love yourself first, is a reminder that self-love is not selfish. It is necessary. As a single mother who was used to always putting others' needs before her own, I have learned that in order to be present for them, I first need to be present for me. Show up for me. And loving yourself is a perfect example of how we could all do that. It was an inspiration by my brother and my aunt, who were always constantly reminding me and always telling me, you have to love yourself first. Love yourself first. 
That's a great one. That's a great one. That doesn't hit for me, though. I mean, it's great for Denise, might be great for you, but this is why it's important to try it on. Love yourself first. When I think about it on my wrist, that doesn't like give me the tingles. Well, I think what you had said earlier was really cool about just that this is, um, that a mantra like this can help you on your path of becoming Mm. rather than the tattoo needing to be a reminder of the end game or being symbolic of something that you aspire to complete rather than just this is this is my evolution i love that that sort of shifted how i feel about love yourself first for me because you're right it is it is a it is part of the becoming awesome And it doesn't have to be a tattoo, you guys. Again, this is not an episode about tattoos. This is an episode about using research to create a lifeline to your power and to optimism and to resilience and belief in self. And I love this example from another listener named Monica. Hi, Mel. It's Monica from Italy. I don't have tattoos, but I think the best sentence for me right now would be the little things. It helps me keep going when I think that my goal is too big for me, too far away, and that I'm just wasting time. And it also reminds me to enjoy the small, beautiful things of my life. Bye. Ooh, that's a good one too. I love that. I love that. That reminds me of the thing that Oakley said at the end of the episode that we did just recently about anxiety, where he refers to your ordinary, extraordinary life. And it, that phrase, I could see him getting that tattooed on him at some point because he is so much a guy that focuses on finding the extraordinary in the ordinary the little things, if you will. Wow, love yourself first. The little things, one gate, it shall be. Yeah, the little things is, it's got a calming Hmm. tone to it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I love that we're kind of dissecting these because I, I think it's really important that you truly pick a phrase that feels a certain way to you whether that's calming or uplifting or energizing, or it just feels like the truth, that no matter what's going on in your life, you can count on that this phrase is true. I think, I think that's what makes it also somewhat hard, is that that feeling, mm-hmm. like I think most people's reaction is to react swiftly to how that phrase or mantra sounds or feels in that moment and then they move on as opposed to as you say kind of sitting with it letting it marinate uh posting it on a wall putting it by your bedside but allowing it to seep in over time a little bit to Mm. see truly like how does that feel try it on you know i now want to get another tattoo (laughs) <laughs> because of this conversation. Yes. Maybe I'm going to get my mom to write something. <laughs> this Remember, this show is not about getting a tattoo. Okay, now listen. Are you saying I shouldn't get a tattoo? <laughs> no, not necessarily. Well, I will tell you what I do want everyone to do. I do want you to take us passing you the mic very seriously. And I want you to try the power of creating a meaningful mantra or a word or a phrase that you can turn to every day. And I do want you to get a post-it note or a piece of painter's tape or something that you can write your phrase, word, or mantra that's meaningful to you on it. And let's take it a step further. I'd love to see these. I believe in you is a good one. I believe in you. I believe in you. For years, though, that probably, well, if I think about it from me in the present moment, it wouldn't sink because there have been plenty of moments where I didn't believe in myself. Mm -hmm. But if I think about it as a message from the future Mel, the person I'm becoming, as if she 
was saying to me, I believe in you, Mel. And I know what's coming. And that's why I believe in you. That would go, ooh, I love that. That's really, maybe that'll be my next tattoo. But it's interesting how you describe that as though it's something outside of you or a voice or something mm -hmm. external. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think of one gate as, like I don't hear my dad talking to me per se. Like I don't see my dad all the time. I think of it, whereas what you were just describing is some larger voice, which is profound and and can be powerful, but it's uh, it conjures up a visual. It shall be as a larger voice for me. Yeah. It is. And so I would love to see your meaningful mantra, and I'd love to see you. So take a photo of you and your Post-it note or you and your Sharpie and share your phrase or word or mantra and tag me, Mel Robbins, tag the podcast, the Mel Robbins podcast. You might even be featured on our social media channels, but mostly I just want to see you and give you a virtual hug and a high five. And um, I want to get inspired by you. Speaking of meaningful mantras that you say to yourself, there's something I want to be sure to say to you. In case nobody else tells you this today, I wanted to tell you that I love you. I love you too. And I believe in you. I believe in you. And I believe in your ability to create a life that you love one gate at a time. And if you do, it shall be. <laughs> oh, let's go get tattoos. <laughs> Woo, there is something in the air today. I cannot wait to jump into our topic today. The universe is saying, we have to talk about tattoos. I'm really excited because first of all, my husband, Chris is here. Hi, Chris. Hi, Mel. <laughs> And I had to get Chris here because I am going to answer one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. And it is a question that is very personal. <laughs> 